Vampire facelift yesterday. It resulted in significant bruising under my right eye. Can I have a broadband light treatment for the bruising without it reversing the vampire facelift? Thank you for your question. You submitted your question without a photo, and you stated in your question that you went, underwent a vampire facelift procedure the day prior and that you have a significant bruise under one eye. And you're asking, can you undergo a BBL procedure to address the bruising without reversing the effects of vampire facelift? Well, since you haven't submitted a photo, it's a little bit difficult to assess what a significant bruise is, but I can certainly give you some guidance that can maybe help you make a, make a decision. A little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. I have been a significant member of the Vampire Facelift Network at times uh, as a media resource when questions come up about this extremely popular procedure. Now, just for the sake of clarity, uh, it's important that w I at least provide the information about what is a true vampire facelift. The reason is, is that the term vampire facelift has become so popular that a lot of doctors are using it not in the spirit of the way it's intended, but rather as a generic term to describe the use of PRP, platelet-rich plasma. So the vampire facelift, as, as conceived by Dr. Runnels and as performed by, by the members of the network who have been trained and use the, uh, do the procedure in a specific way, is essentially a combination of using a single syringe of a hyaluronic acid filler and place it in specific areas of the face to help restore volume, and in addition to use vampire facelift concept of PRP to specifically improve quality of the skin in various areas of the face, and to do it in a way such that bruising is minimized and that so that people can get back to normal life as quickly as possible. So there are a lot of nuances to that method. Now that being said, you did mention that this was under your eye, and certainly as an oculofacial plastic surgeon, I can tell you that the eyelid area is very vascular, and that even in the best of hands, a single needle puncture can uh, result in, in a bleed, and because it's so, the area is so vascular, you can get a significant bleed. Now that being said, I can certainly understand the temptation to undergo a procedure like BBL or broadband light therapy to try to clear the bruise. Now I'm going to give you my opinion, and again this is my opinion as a clinician, as somebody, as a surgeon, someone who has been in practice a long time, and someone who also owns multiple lasers as well as had experience with IPL or pulse light and I've actually moved away from using pulse light uh, energies um, therapies at this time because of alternatives that I feel are more predictable. I would be concerned that the use of a thermal energy device to try to break down the blood may be at the same time delivering a lot of heat into the skin in a way that would not be necessarily beneficial to the skin. My concern would be because eyelid skin is the thinnest skin in the body and it is very very delicate I think that first of all doing any type of pulse light treatment in that area of course you have to have eye protection but what kind of outcome are we going to actually achieve if you add a thermal energy process when there is still the risk that go with placing a, using a thermal energy device? You can get more bruising. You can get more issues in terms of overheating the skin. And you may be dealing with more problems than where you started. The clearance of blood under the eye can take time, but it usually 
is re resolves within a week. And so I generally tell any patient who is de dealing with a bruise is essentially wear sunblock to protect your skin from hyperpigmentation resulting from the sun getting preferentially absorbed by the skin and resulting in darkening. Um, depending on your skin type, the, risk, the relative risk varies. But on top of that, understand that a little bit of hydration, and you can probably see the clearance of this area go from a bruise to turning different shades of yellow to disappearing. And whether it's this procedure or even a Botox injection or a filler injection, this is part of the, part of the reality and you have to be prepared for that. I think it's best to ask your doctor about this, but I think that you, you don't necessarily have to move to doing another procedure, particularly a thermal energy procedure. You know, one of the reasons why I've kind of shifted away from IPL at this point was I found that for the things that I want to achieve for skin rejuvenation that I was doing with IPL uh, and other model things that IPL can do, such as hair removal, etc., I found that specific lasers, whether it's ablative or non-ablative lasers and Q-switch lasers, I've been very happy with in being able to deliver more predictable levels of energy with lower risk in terms of other secondary outcomes that we want to minimize. So again, it's a matter of the doctor's personal uh, choice you know, when it comes to these different devices and based on experience. But if, for, for the issue of a bruise under the eye, most likely I'd say, again, speaking as an oculofacial plastic surgeon, bruising go, uh, under the eyes can go away pretty fast. And I think it's better to likely to be, go, would be conservative and not yet add another variable that can further the risks of complications in this area. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck, and thank you for your question.